Hello everyone. Today I am here to share with you information, tips, kind of a how-to guide about NetGalley. So I'm if you've been on my channel for a while, you've heard me talk about NetGalley for a long time. I'm a member of NetGalley for a while. I don't know how long. I've, it's got to be at least over five years. But either way, I'm going to share with you some information, tips and tricks, and all things like that. So if you don't know what NetGalley is, it is a site where you can read ARCs, aka advanced readers copies, which means you can read books before they come out, only on ebooks. So for example, just to show you, um, sometimes you get ARCs in the mail, just like this. Um, this is The Night Shift by Alex Finley. It doesn't come out till March 2022, so you can tell it's an ARC because it's not fully finished. It'll say on there, advanced readers copy on sale, stuff like that. So NetGalley is pretty much the ebook version of ARCs. So if you're interested in reading books in advance, things like that, NetGalley is a great place to read. And you don't have to be like a professional to be a part of NetGalley. Anybody can join just as long as you have some social media sites, aka either like a YouTube or an Instagram or a TikTok now that's going on right now too. Too. So either way, you just have to have one of those where you can talk about books, even your Goodreads. And basically, you go on NetGalley. And what is NetGalley for? So like I said, NetGalley is for eARCs, yes. But what is the purpose of it? Mainly is the purpose for publishers. Publishers put eARCs out there to get booksellers, reviewers like myself, to get feedback on a book before it comes out, to get the you know ball rolling, to get the hype going up. Because the more you talk about a book before it comes out, the bigger it's going to be hyped, the more sales it might make, things like that. So that is the whole purpose of NetGalley is to literally just read books before they come out. I should say of how to start is just to join and then um, there you can go and there's different genres you can see on the side of several different genres you can pick your favorite genres um, and you kind of go from there. NetGalley also has like a read now tab where anybody, any NetGalley member can read from that tab. Like that's just publishers that have put books there that they just let anybody read so that's awesome but either way you just kind of go and select a book you want to check out you can like i love how they sort it you can sort by like publication date which is what i do a lot of times you can go by most requested so you can keep up to date what everybody else is requesting things like that it's very easy to navigate it's a very easy um, site they also have an app which i don't love it's not the best i think they're still working on it so i don't use their app a ton so i don't think i can recommend it to you fully but they're site is very easily accessible. I really enjoy it. They just also started putting audiobooks on there, which is amazing. I haven't listened to an audiobook yet because I just don't listen to audiobooks, so I can't give you information on how to put that on your phone and things like that, but I do know they have audiobooks. Um, and in case you're also just joining that gal and you're like, how the heck do I get this book that have been a, that I've been pre-approved to, to my Kindle, which is a big thing. You're like, how does that happen? <laughs> because at first I was like, I don't know how these two correlate. How am I going to get this eARC to this Kindle app? I'm not sure. I actually have a reading device guide, which I will link down below for you. Um, and it just tells you how to get your um, book to Kindle and I think other various genres, but I think Kindle's probably the most commonly used one, honestly. And you just have to add your Kindle email because if you go on your Amazon site, if you go on your Amazon profile and under Kindle, things like that, you have, your Kindle has its like own email. And so you have to add like NetGalley's email to be automatically approved. So basically when, so basically what you do is you just put NetGalley's e um, email in there and just put like auto approval always to go to your Kindle. It, it sounds really confusing, so I'll link it below. It's not that confusing, I promise. You set it up once and you're done. It's really that easy. Also to note, I get a lot of questions on how do you get so many ARCs, things like that. Um, I'd say NetGalley is way easier to obtain ARCs than rather emailing a publisher specifically, which I've done many of many times, even if you email a publisher to get an eARC is way easier to get a physical ARC because it's just literally a link, things like that. They don't have to go to their marketing department to get your address, things like that, to send you a physical copy. eARCs are just amazing. I really came to love eARCs in the year of 2020 when <laughs> everything hit the fan and I was like, this is just the easiest way to obtain ARCs and to read ARCs and I just fell head back and I just fell deep back in love with NetGalley all over again. So here's the thing, how to get approved for books. So when you go on NetGalley, you can be overwhelmed at first 
course because there's literally just books on books on books. I would say the biggest thing is to request moderately. Do not go overboard. And this is one of those examples where I say, do as I say, kids, and not as I do because I don't practice what I preach. <laughs> I do really go overboard on requesting. I've gotten a lot better, but still I'm always like request, request, request. And you can typically feel that a lot when you first join NetGalley. You just want to request every book because you're like, maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. And then all of a sudden, maybe you'll have like 50 books on your shelf and you're like, oh, and it's overwhelming. So I would say request books that you know you were gonna read in the next couple months, like books that you're like, have already been on your list for most anticipated, books that you're just really excited about, not books that you see that you're like, hmm, that might be kind of interesting. No, don't do that at first. Just request moderately. And the reason for that is because if you get you request a whole bunch and you get approved for a whole bunch and you can't keep up with the reviews that you're writing, your feedback ratio is going to hurt and your approval rate is going to go quite down. So you want to make sure you request moderately. That way you can read it and review it and your, and your feedback ratio, which we'll talk about more, will go up more, which means you will get approved more. Another good tip on how to get approved for more eARCs is to keep up with your profile, your social links, things like that. Publishers want to see that when they go to, um, I know each publisher has specific rules to have a certain number. Sometimes you have to like do all this. It's just easier to put all your information down in your profile. For example, on my profile, I put my name, I put my favorite genres. I put, I think I just updated it when I was just thinking about this video because that's, I was like, it's been a while. So I put like a, a as of February 2022, I have this many subscribers with this many views. Publishers want to see that. They also want to see links to all your social media where you talk about books. I put a link to obviously this channel, a link to my Instagram, a link to my Goodreads is a big thing with NetGalley. They want to see Goodreads reviews too. Um, you want to keep up to date with all your social media handles and also just your information in general. The more you keep up with that, the more chances are you'll get approved for books. Another one is, is when you are finished reading a book and you review it, it's always good to link an outside review. This is another case where I do not do this as much and I need to be better about that. There's a chance I always write a nice little review in NetGalley, but there's always a little link where you can be like, link to where you've done outside review, whether it be an Instagram post or a YouTube video or a Goodreads review. That will help you out in turn. So basically my advice for getting approved for ARCs is keeping up with your social media, doing reviews pretty frequently. Like don't let books just like expire pretty much, if that makes any sense, make sure you review them and also to request moderately. The more you review, the more you will get approved. That sounds like a little tagline. The more you get reviewed, the more you review, the more you will get approved. If publishers see that you request a book and that you read it in a pretty like decent amount of time and you review it, they'll be like, hmm, this is a pretty reliable reviewer. So I'm much more open and keen to approving them in the future. You get what I'm saying here? So if publishers see that you're keeping up to date with your reviews and that you're pretty steadfast on them and do really well on it, they will be more likely to approve you in the future. It'll also push up your feedback ratio. Now on your profile, you'll have a little feedback ratio of what your percentage is. Mine is like, what is mine? Mine. Uh, NetGalley's recommended feedback ratio is at 80%. Mine is at 65 and I've been really working at it. And I know I, if I read all the books on my shelf right now, I'd probably go up to that. But if your feedback ratio is in the 20 and 30s, we got to work on that. We got to read more because if publishers see that, they'll be like, mm, not very trustworthy, doesn't review a ton, deny. So you don't want to do that. You want to have your feedback ratio. So the more you review, the higher your feedback ratio will go up. And even tell NetGalley, there's been books that I have requested and have been approved for and I've started reading them and immediately I'm like, oh, this is not the book for me. You can go on there and say, I did not finish this book and it'll give a reason why and you can tell why. And I don't know if that affects your feedback ratio or not, but either way, it's off your shelf. You've done, said what you need to say about the book so the chapters kind of close on that. So basically, NetGalley, if you want to dip your toes into reading advanced readers' copies and you're nervous that because you don't think you have a big enough platform or you don't, you know, have a lot of, you know, followers, things like that, don't worry about that. I think a lot of times publishers just want to see your reviews. They want to hear what you have to say and how um, quickly you have to say it and how, like, pretty... Um, 
frequently you have to say it. So join NetGalley. It's super easy. I promise you, you just have to just join it and then just try it out. My biggest tip, as I will always say with NetGalley, is to request moderately because I know you can get trigger happy as soon as you get on that site because you're going to be like, request, request, request. Do not do that. It'll be so over, overblown. Trust me, I did it when I first joined. I still kind of do it now. Just request. I would just make a list, honestly, on your phone, on paper, whatever you want to do of books that are coming out in the next year that you're just like, I really want, if I could pick like my wish list of books, these will be on it. I would write those down and then I would search NetGalley because you can do that. You can search an author, you can search a book title and nine times out of 10, that'll be on NetGalley and whether or not you'll be approved or not, that's a different thing. So, and just so you know, if you think like I get approved for everything, no, I get denied for a lot. And I also just get kind of ghosted a lot. And that means pretty much that when you go on your shelf, you have, um, books that are on your shelf that you need to get feedback on. You also have um, not active in, in there as like pending request, which means the publisher is still waiting to approve or deny you. I have like probably like 15 books in there right now and some of them have came out like a year ago and it, they're still sitting there in pending request. So sometimes publishers will ghost you. It just happens. It happens to me a lot. And don't be fooled in thinking that just because I have a decent following, I'm going to approve for everything. That is not the case. No, I'm very lucky of what I get approved for, but I get denied a lot too. And that's just how it goes. That's how the cookie crumbles, as they say. But just, you know, go on that guy. I really enjoy it. I know there's a whole nother site called Edelweiss and it seems a little bit more complicated to me. So that's why I've kind of just stuck with neck alley. I I don't know. Um, I just really enjoy it. It's a great way to read eARCs, to read books before they come out, to get your feelings on them and things like that. So I hope this video gave you some tips and tricks. I hope it introduced you to things and I hope it helped in general because right now as I'm talking, I feel like I've just kind of like gone all, like all over the place with it, but hopefully it was somewhat helpful. If you have any questions for me about NetGalley that I didn't answer in this video, which I'm sure you do, please leave them in the comments and I will try my best to answer them because you know, I will try my best. I'm not an expert at all, but I will try my best. I hope you enjoy this video somewhat and thank you for watching. Bye.